it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you are analyzing your application's performance. You observe that certain cloud big table tables in your cluster are used much more than others, causing inconsistent application performance for end users. You discover that some tablets have large sections of similarly named row keys and are heavily utilized, while other tablets are running idle. You discover that a user's zip code is a first component of the row key and your application is being heavily used by profiles originating from that zip code. You want to change how you generate row keys so that they are human readable and so that cloud big table demand is more evenly distributed within the cluster. What should you do? In this interesting scenario, you already realize that there is a performance problem with cloud big table. We also see that the way we've designed the row key with the zip code at the beginning is probably the cause of the issue. The issue being that certain parts of Bigtable are heavily utilized while others are underutilized or idle. In our redesign, we want to have the keys be human readable and it also should spread the load evenly across Cloud Bigtable. To get to the correct solution, Let's first understand how Bigtable is architected. When requests come to Bigtable, they reach one of many nodes. These nodes are computational, and there are many of them. The data is stored elsewhere, separate from the computation, on Colossus, which is Google's distributed, highly scalable storage system. Inside Colossus, the data is stored on tablets. So the nodes operate separately from the tablets and the nodes are able to access these tablets. The way data is stored in the tablets itself has an implication on performance. Inside the tablet, which is inside Colossus, the data is stored in lexicographic order which basically means that it is sorted. Whether it is alphabets or numbers, there is a particular order that is defined and is sorted according to that. The implication for us working with Bigtable is that given that the data is sorted and they are going to be in separate ta uh, tablets, depending on how we define the row key, we could have certain sets of data be in some tablets and not in others. Let's take an example where there are these people coming in to this group and there are some managers who are responsible for keeping them sorted within that group. So for example, when Ava comes in, she goes into the A column. Later, when Bella comes in, she goes into the B column and Charlie is put in the C column. When new people enter the system now, and let's say all of them have their names starting with A, Amelia, Alex and Avery, they clearly have to go in the A column, which means that the load on A is going to now increase. Of course, the data also needs to be sorted. So, this causes considerable increase in load for A, while B and C have nothing to do. When data is written in this way, or when there's a read request saying, give me all the people whose name starts with A, the A column is going to be heavily utilized while the others remain idle. This is what is called hotspotting. A key design could improve the spread of uh, usage or utilization across A, B and C and avoids hotspotting. 
So, what is the Roki uh, within Big Table? Every table in Big Table has only one index, and that is the Roki. There are no secondary indices. And the Roki itself is sorted lexicographically. So, if our design did not accommodate this fact, we could have hotspotting. In this particular project, let us say all the requests are coming from, or a primary set of these requests, as uh, given in the question, is coming from one zip code. So, let's say 75018 is one zip code. And there are different places or different data coming from the zip code. 75018 in this case is an around this more in Paris and let's say there is information coming from Rue Marcade, Rue Laba, Rue Ordinaire and Rue Lepic. Since all this data is coming from one place and if we sort the data, the paths that or the table tablets that take care of the 75018 blocks are going to be overutilized. While the tablets that take care of other areas like 75019, 75020 and all the others are going to remain idle or underutilized. Therefore, clearly this is a problem with the current design. Since most of the users are coming currently from this particular zip code, we are going to have overutilization in one area of big table. Now, we have to find out which of these options improve that design. Option A suggests that we use serially generated integer values. So we are going to have numbers like 1, 2, 3, 100, 100, 203, but we have the same problem there. They are also sorted and they are going to be close to each other, similar to the way that Alex, Emilia, Ava and Avery are close to each other. Therefore, this does not resolve the hotspotting problem and therefore, we have to eliminate option A. In option C, it is suggested that we use a subset of the MD5 hash of the row contents. So we take all the row contents, we hash it, which means that we will get some unique value and there's a very high chance that they're not going to be lexicographically sorted. Even data that is close to each other might get a completely different hash. So in that sense, a hash by itself might distribute the data well. However, do we know for sure that the row content itself are always going to be unique? Is there a possibility that we get two entries called 75018 markade? If that be the case, the hash is going to result in the same string and that could become a clash. Not only that, the option suggests that we use a subset of the MD5 hash. That does not necessarily give you uniqueness. If you take any one part of the hash key that is generated, there is no guarantee of uniqueness there. Therefore, using a subset of the MD5 hash also will not work. Moreover, as an extra point, you would also incur additional costs for computing these hashes. Every time you need to write data or you need to read data, you will have some cost for the computation. It won't be much, but it could increase it slightly. The last point that works against this option is that the output from the hashes are not human readable. And since that is a requirement, clearly option C has to be eliminated. Option D suggests that we use a Unix epoch style timestamp represented in milliseconds. What is this? Given the timestamp, it is able to convert it into a time which is one large number. So with this data coming in continuously, which is going to be timestamp and one after the other, the Unix timestamps are also going to follow a similar pattern. It is just going to be increasing numbers, not necessarily increasing one by one, but they are going to be next to each other when they are lexically sorted, or rather lexicographically sorted. 
So you're still going to have the problem of hot spotting and skewed load with the Unix epoch style timestamps. Moreover, the keys themselves are not necessarily human readable. Of course, they're all characters, you can read it, but it doesn't make a lot of sense of what it represents within the room. Therefore, option D is also going to be eliminated. Option B suggests that we use a concatenation of multiple human readable attributes. Let's look at what that is. So in this particular example, we have this data coming in at 10 a.m. from the zip code 75018 from Rue Markade. Similarly for Rue Laba and Rue Markade. If we used the original approach, which was to have the zip code right at the beginning, we would have all these numbers be next to each other, or rather all these row keys be next to each other, even if we combine the data. The alternative that is being suggested is that one, don't just use the zip code, combine it with other things, but not only really combine it in a way that the zip code is first, because that seems to be where all the requests are coming from, from one particular zip code, we probably should put it later on. So in the first option where I have got 75018 or the zip code at the beginning, you can see that all of it goes into a tablets that are close by each other or the same tablet and therefore there's going to be hotspotting there. In the second option shown in green, I've put the name of the street first. So Laba is first in one place, there is Markade next and there's Ordinate later. Now you can see that these will potentially go in completely different tablets because they are not next to each other, even though they are from the same zip code. So using a concatenation of multiple human readable attributes like this will give you a better spread on big table tablets. Moreover, it also satisfies the condition that we have a human readable attribute for the row key. Given all of that, B is our best option, which is to use a concatenation of multiple human readable attributes. Now, it's time to subscribe to all the great content we've got lined up for you to learn Google Cloud and to help you with the certifications.